thousand. We're uh, approaching Bender from the north side on the yeah. freeway. On I twenty five here. Smoggy day, and this is only April. <laughs> uh, never saw a smog like this in Denver before. Coming down from up north in uh, Fort Collins. Of course, we didn't have any up there, but if you approach Denver, you can see it. When I was here in 97, they didn't have anything like this. But Atlanta's the same way. They didn't have any smog in 97, and this last summer, 99, the smog was so heavy in Atlanta, and that's got the dubious title of a university in the U.S. for smog. <laughs> Head over and look at the city here. Get in the right lane. Apologize for the quality of this, but I'm driving and filming, so we'll just make sure that you're lucky to be able to see it. We're just archiving that we are here in Denver at this time, and Alice in the car, and that's the whole purpose of this little bit of film here. There's downtown Denver. Anything else, Al? Yeah, there's not else. Okay, we're all set. I'm not terribly talkative until I got on my favorite subject. <laughs> then you can't shut me up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> More later. <laughs> Thing of historical significance, at least for the sports fans here in Denver, this is construction of the new Broncos Stadium that I think is supposed to be ready by this fall. So this is a good way to document a little bit of Denver here. Wow, this is going to be a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to pan over here to downtown off my left. Yeah. Forgot about this view. There we go. Back to the traffic. And it's only one area. Hello again. This uh, is a special recording, what we call an archives recording. And the preceding part of this film was showing some of downtown Denver on the date of, uh, I think it was 18th of April. Today is the 20th of April, year 2000. The final subject I wish to wish to broach in this presentation and archive, uh, whatever you wish to call it, is the subject of mind control. It is very prevalent today. It had its beginnings thousands of years ago on cult technologies, cult techniques involving uh, preconditioned young girls and families where there have been a minimum of three generations of child abuse, sexual child abuse where you could easily split the mind and produce a mind slave, a sex slave, or whatever. But that was a long drawn out process of at least 10, perhaps 15 years of work on a single individual with, with a handler sort of guiding them all the way. And they were useful for perhaps 15 years, maybe not much more than that today, about 20. And they were worn out and no longer of use, and they usually were eliminated. In recent years, since the beginning and the, I should say the end of World War II, the beginning of the last half of the century, many people have gotten into the act of, of contributing ideas and thoughts which, shall we say, wove and come totally new cloth for mind control. Dr. Wilhelm Reich from uh, Germany and Austria under study of uh, Vienna's most famous psychiatrist, Dr. Freud. Others were involved in it. Uh, Joseph Mengele, the angel of death from Nazi German camps, made his contributions to mind slavery. Dr. Ewan Cameron, uh, working for the CIA using MK Ultra program and of course working with various chemicals such as LSD and others. And on the list of chemicals one must include fluorides in the drinking water because that is a mind control program, not tooth control. The tooth fairy dreamed that one up to uh, abuse an old phrase. That has been prevalent since World War II in the slave labor camps of Germany, then in the slave labor camps of Russia, admitted to by Russian generals to one of the people involved with selling surplus fluorides by the thousands of tons to the Russians for use as they themselves stated to keep the slaves docile in the camps. Chemical mind control is involved, electronic mind control, all kinds of elements have been brought together 
to create a scenario today which would take hours to expound properly. But I wish to state in this rather short period of time left that mind-controlled slavery is an ongoing product, an ongoing thing in all of the major cities of the U.S. and certain cities of Europe and Asia and to a lesser, much lesser degree in Australia. I've been in Australia, I've been in Switzerland, <clears throat> I've been over most of the U.S. The <clears throat> predominance of effort for mind control is in the U.S. because the United States is the prize target for those of the so-called New World Order who wish to control all civilization by a combination of mind control slavery, economic slavery, disinformation, miseducation, and all of it going together, including more exotic types of mind control involving the use of cell phone towers, cell phones, other electronic means, including from satellites, whereby today with NSA's technology, they can, from a satellite, pick out an individual computer of an individual person and see exactly what they're looking at on their computer, what they're going through. It's a rather horrendous idea, <clears throat> even more horrendous in its applications, becoming more universal, primarily aimed at the big cities because the urban populations are the ones that have the clout that do the manufacturing, who control most of the economics. Those people living alone or semi-alone in the back hills are not concerned about it, so they're not considered personnel who can exert much influence one way or the other in the terms of policy or world history. But I want to show a few, only a handful of documents here which deal with the subject. Much of this information comes from outside the U.S. from a magazine called Nexus, published in Australia. And what they have done in the last two, two and a half years, <coughs> excuse me, in showing information by various reporters is quite interesting. This is one which I want to put on the record. As I say, there are many more. I don't have time to show them all. Again, showing the problems of mind control slavery connected with the New World Order and mentioning, of course, the overhead uh, top-level mind control program, Project Monarch. That covers both the old uh, child abuse slavery systems as well as the electronic and the Montauk Boys. The Montauk Boys should be mentioned in passing, of course, again. That program is very insidious. It started in 1976, and it's still ongoing to this day in the U.S. and elsewhere has turned out approximately 10 million Montauk boys. And that is my information and my data because I worked on the program for three years as one of the people working at Montauk Point. And the program in 1981 was moved off of Montauk Point to six locations in Long Island and principal locations throughout the United States and all the major cities, including Atlanta, Georgia, which I currently call home. Very, very heavy there in all phases. And it can be seen in terms of its effects on people who are quite unaware of what is happening. If you are a careful observer, you will see the degradation of, of sensory awareness, the de degradation in performance, the degradation in uh, spontaneity of people, of friendliness, of nearly everything. And the, and the auto rage, the car rage is getting worse. And they use all forms in Atlanta. But this is only one side of the problem. It's not just in the United States alone. We have another, another nice little program here which I want to show. And that, of course, is one that's involving the Navy and, to some extent, NSA to a greater extent. It's currently a well-known program, Echelon. And it's important because they are spying on every country in the world on their most secure systems, the National Security Agency, likes to know what's going on. Well, there's a lawsuit in preparation now in the European Union against NSA. It hasn't come to pass yet. And I don't know when it will in the future, perhaps in the next few months, next year. Against NSA for their spying on all of their internal, most secure systems in Britain, France, Germany, wherever. And they're not exactly pleased by it. Uh, and I can't say I exactly blame them. But this is one aspect <clears throat> of mind control in terms of the political aspect, the political cloud of having the proper information. And I might add, information, whether it's proper or not, they insist on having it. Some time ago, a gentleman by the name of Michael Powers 
produced a book or booklet entitled Global Electronic Mind Control. It's out of print, disappeared, and I happened to get a copy from somebody, and I've reproduced it since. Nobody knows what happened to Michael Powers or his organization. He produced six uh, monographs like this one, the last one dealing with the production of clones, and that may be the one that did him in. But I only say that because I don't know whether that is a fact or not, but I imply that that's probably what happened. But there is information out there, and speaking of this time and era, the last few years, the last two years is quite heavy. And, of course, this raises the question, what do you do to stop it? What do you do to get out from under it? Again, the topic is vast, but I do want to give some information. And, of course, anyone, as I have made this information public in any case, anyone who wants to contact me about it can. A number of people have proposed various systems, various ideas as to what can one do to break the mind control. First of all, you have to understand what it is. First thing that happens with a victim, whether it's male or female, but primarily in the Montauk Boys program, is it just males until the most recent phase of it. You have to have the person's right and left brain lobes, which normally function in a synchronized manner, broken in terms of the synchronicity of operation. When that is done, then you can easily develop a person as either predominantly right-brained or left-brained. Left-brained meaning the analytical type, the engineer, the scientist. Right-brained meaning the metaphysician, the spiritualist, the one who pursues more exotic aspects of civilization and society, and not the hardcore analytic type and the hardcore documentary type, but someone who is perhaps more speculative, more into the feelings and the sensitivity. Once you break that synchronization, you can produce right or left-handed uh, right brain to left brain, right hand or left hand as you wish, change their sexuality. A male can be made homosexual or heterosexual, and the female, either way, as they may choose, those who do this program. And in the research I've done on over five years or more on the Bon Talk Boys program, some very startling information has come to light since 1998, wherein the Air Force broke into some of the underground bases on Long Island, took all the documents and dossiers and personnel, and through various channels, started investigating who's really running this program. What we found out at that point was rather startling. We always assumed it was a government program. It is not. It's privately run. Started by the Germans, but taken over by others, or perhaps the Germans were being controlled and steered in this manufacturing of this program. And it appears that this is a program which is involving religious groups, uh, ones who would, would never suspect such as the Knights of Malta, uh, <clears throat> uh, various groups of monks, the Rosicrucian Order, the Rosy Cross Order. Uh, there were two separate orders there, not identical. By implication, possibly the Masonic Order. I'm not saying that as a fact. I'm saying by implication they may be involved. And a North gr Planet group appears to be involved in the background. This may not be Alpha Centauri, I've already mentioned. It may be some other group. But what do you do once a person is programmed to break it? Left alone long enough, the individual will eventually come out of it because the buried information in the subconscious will eventually surface. That could take a lifetime. In the case of very high IQ people, it takes perhaps two or three years. That's still a fairly long time. A group came into existence about 1990 uh, shall we say, formed by Dr. Virgil Crane out of Dallas, Texas, resurrecting some old technology, which goes back, again, some thousands of years, and involving a particular form of manipulation of the neck, which is not chiropractic, but is what is called alphabiotic metaphysics. And this is the cover sheet of a, shall we say, a brochure <clears throat> dealing with the history of this process, how it affects the brain, why the brain must function as a unified left and right lobe system completely synchronized. In order to think clearly, you have to have two approaches to whatever information comes into, the, into your head via whatever source. You'll be able to analyze it both analytically and in terms of sensitivity and feeling. With the two separate brain lobes, if they're totally synchronized, will do this automatically, and you'll get a much better perspective of whatever information comes into you, what it means to you, whether it's safe or not safe, etc. 
and if you have been programmed, will break the back of the programming. That does not mean you will immediately get back all of your memories. It means that you are no longer controllable as long as you maintain the synchronized state. And the practitioners, which are all over the world now, some 100, and perhaps more now, <clears throat> are set up for just this process. And I might add most hopefully, and most happily, it takes one adjustment of about 15 minutes on a person where there's not been actual physical brain damage, where the brain is physically normal, to reorient, resynchronize the right and left brain lobes. And believe me, in 15 minutes of one treatment, that is almost a miracle. I went through it once to see whether it had any effect on me because I would already achieve synchronicity. And there are some very interesting, uh, shall we say, digitally generated picture patterns which have a buried stereo image in them the magic eye gallery being the best, <clears throat> wherein you stare at these, and if you are synchronized, you will see the stereo image. If your brain is not synchronized, your left and right brain lobes are out of sync, you will not see the stereo image. It's a very simple test and very effective. And after the uh, reunification process, if you want to call it that, you will see the stereo images. And the doctors also state the more you use this process, a single treatment is sufficient perhaps, but it's better to go several treatments because it locks in the synchronization more completely with each treatment. It also centers you, if I may put the term in the present time, uh, in view of all I said, that perhaps is somewhat laughable, but nevertheless, in your present moment of your living, to be unified there and feel you were there in the present time and not scattered mentally all over the landscape is a big plus. It's a subject that needs a lot more time. I have lectured on this extensively and will continue to do so. But I wish to point out that for those who are worried about mind control and all the negative information, and there's lots of it, you have to know who the enemy is and what the enemy is before you can do something about it. In other words, if you feel that you have been mistreated, find out how to get around it and how to correct it. Many, many people have been brainwashed. It's in them uh, many, many millions. They don't know it. The process is so thorough today, they're totally unaware that they have ever had anything done to them. And that, of course, is part of the process. To convince that individual that there's nothing wrong with them, they've never been brainwashed, if somebody brings a subject up, they laugh. I'm not brainwashed, not me. The tests from the Magic Eye Gallery are very conclusive. They're very simple and they're very effective. Anyone who hears this message, I suggest you get a copy of that book and try it out on yourself and your friends. You may be surprised. There is hope, and I want to make that point very clear. And as we go forward in history, my feeling is that all the negativity that we have witnessed and do witness at the present time is going to dissipate. And possibly the collapse, the final ultimate collapse of the New World Order and those behind it will generate some very serious problems. But I know history shows that humanity survives, and it does not go backwards into the Dark Ages. With that, I think I will close and say there's much more that can be covered, possibly another tape at another time, but I think this is enough for one session. Thank you very much. For those of you who see this and listen, I hope it has helped to you.